Does Hajj erase missed prayers? Okay, so let me explain what that question means, right? So when you go perform Hajj, then an accepted Hajj uh, results in a person becoming sinless the way that they the way they were the day they were born. Essentially, you're sinless. So does that mean that all of those missed prayers in the past for somebody who's missed a lot of prayers, Allah forbid it, um, that person, uh, all of that is now wiped away and they, they begin afresh and it's like it's as though they haven't missed prayers, right? And anybody who asks that question is already assuming, probably based on what they've learned or what they've been told, that normally they're required to make up for missed prayers. So that just hold that thought, that's important, right? And the reason why people think that is because generally many ulama are of the view, Hanafis in particular, that missed prayers have to be made up. No matter, no matter how many years you know, you've accumulated of missed prayers, you have to make a plan keep a record of how many you've made up and gradually make them all up. Because it's, they call it, you know, it's qadha fi dhimma. It's like, it's something that you owe, right? That does not mean that the sin hasn't been waived. So therefore the question of sin uh, it applies to tawbah. Because at ta'ibu min adham bikum Allah dhambala, the Prophet ﷺ says that the person who truly sin sincerely repent, repents is as though they have not sinned at all. So the sin is wiped out, but it's like the money is owed. You know, it's like you owe money to somebody, right? And you never paid it back on time. And the person's upset with you. And then you go and then you seek forgiveness from that person. And they forgive you and you become friends again. So they've forgiven you for the delay and for not communicating, etc., etc. But you still owe them the money. Does that make sense? So that's how the Hanaf or the Hanafis see it. That, you know, your sin is, the crime is forgiven, your sin is forgiven. But you still owe that salah, right? That's how it's seen. Other ulama take it literally. The person who has uh, who has made tawbah, it's as though it's as though they have not uh, committed the sin at all, and therefore they start anew, they start afresh, and they don't have to make up that salah. Okay. So the answer to whether Hajj will wipe away the sin or not is the same. And in Hajj, you know, we assume that Tawbah has happened as well. So kind of both scenarios apply. And therefore, the difference of opinion also applies. And that means that some ulama will say that nothing has been wiped out. Others will say, well, usually in Hajj, people make Tawbah and therefore uh, their sin is, uh, the, the, the sin is, uh, the sin as well as the Salah owed is wiped away in the start of fresh. But it's because of the Tawbah, not because of the Hajj. Whenever we hear about any good deed, that the good deed wipes away a sin. Remember, this happens when you walk to the masjid. This happens when you follow up a bad deed with a good deed. It wipes away the sin. But it does that to, uh, to minor sins. That's generally the view about any good deed wiping away uh, bad deeds. With Hajj, you, you add the fact that everybody makes sincere tawbah in Hajj. Everybody does. Who doesn't? Right? Everybody makes sincere tawbah in Hajj. So the difference of opinion that applies to tawbah applies here. And therefore, uh, uh, my advice is, if, you, if you've always done things as a Hanafi, you should have a commitment to making up for your missed salah. Right? People who follow other imams, follow basically follow what you've been following your whole life. People who follow other imams are free to do that. They're both valid points of view. If you're a Hanafi, kind of tr this is just this is advice from me, right? Treat it in two stages, and this is irrelevant of the question of Hajj. This is more about your concern for your missed salah. What you do is you you don't allow the prospect of all of those missed prayers to to sort of scare you. Because it can become daunting and it can further delay a person's repentance and things like that. Don't worry about that. Go ahead. Make your sincere tawbah. Right? Stop missing salah. Start becoming punctual in your salah. And have the intention to make up for them as soon as you can. If you cannot, then inshallah ta'ala, 
Allah has forgiven them. But, and when you can, when you feel motivated enough, when you feel like you've got the discipline and you know your, your, your daily salah is, is now right, you're not missing anymore, then see if you can make a plan to, to make up for the salahs that you have missed. So in the moment of your tawbah, don't weigh yourself down in the moment of your repentance. Don't weigh yourself down with the prospect of all of those missed salahs. Because people sometimes, because they're psychologically so loaded, Right, and so weighed down by that prospect, sometimes it affects the sincerity of their toba. Right, they, they start they start wondering why why should they bother at all because they're never going to be able to be forgiven because they can never make up for it. So first and foremost, you are forgiven. This is just a technicality. This is just something that you owe, and you simply engage in the necessary process to repay it. Right, and you can do that when you can. And if you can't do it, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look upon you in a forgiving, uh, you know, through forgiving eyes because of the fact that you've proven your tawbah. Because a lot of people make tawbah and they're not sincere about it anyway, right? They, they, they make tawbah that I'll never miss a salah again and they go and miss them. But a person who proves that their tawbah is sincere usually will get to a point where it's no longer such a big deal to make up for all of those prayers, right? Because they've developed piety and commitment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I would say, kind of approach it in that two-step way. Don't worry about it at first. When you're ready, think about it. Okay, inshallah. Follow us and subscribe now on all things Hajj and Umrah.